Hi all, today we want to share some basic item tips that might help you spruce up your haunted castle or dungeon build. There are of course a myriad of mods that provide amazing items as well as some really cool battle pass and bazaar items. But not everyone can play with mods, might have missed battle passes before they disappeared forever or simply doesn't have the cash to spend on bazaar items. So these tips are purely for the vanilla base game, no mods or purchases required. By the way, while we will tell you where to get all items we talk about, many of them can also be found frequently as loot around the world. Let's start with the most obvious item that is a must for any sinister building project, skulls. They not only make for great table decor or shelf fillers, they can also be used to create paths or frame other decor. Skulls, or weathered skulls as they are called, can sometimes be found as loot but more reliably when harvesting specific undead creatures or skeletons with a pick, skinning knife or cleaver. Places like the Unnamed City or Black Keep are your best bet. Another set of items you should have at your disposal are the Impaled Skulls. The knowledge is acquired from interacting with a skull totem inside a summoning place and includes four different versions. Sticking with the theme of bones, the fiery wind chimes can also add a ghoulish touch. The knowledge for those can be unlocked at level 31. Another skull, but this time from an animal, can be unlocked as part of the alchemy decor knowledge. Which includes several other smaller items ideal for a sorcerer study or mysterious laboratory. You can find a journal to unlock this knowledge at the Mounds of the Dead. Then there are of course the various candles that are great for creating a spooky atmosphere. The knowledge for a set of basic black and white candles can be learned at level 11. Candles also work particularly well in combination with skulls. Be it as decor for your windows or porches, or lining paths and creating interesting patterns. Another great and often forgotten item is the adorable kindling fire. It can be unlocked at level 10 and is a really nice alternative to candles. Not too big, but a bit more bold than candles. The right lighting can also add to the theme of your base. One way to achieve the desired effect is by using radium torches that can be unlocked at level 52. These standing or wall torches let you add dye for different color effects. Be it orange, green or purple, these lights are perfect for giving your base the vibe you desire. A bit more tedious to acquire, but definitely worth it, are some of the knowledge scrolls for placeable items at the Library of Esoteric Artifacts in the Unnamed City. First, a recipe everyone learns there is for a decorative metal skull with glowing eyes. Other interesting items for eerie building projects are the taxidermid spider from the four taxidermist knowledge. The various serpentman statues. Colored candles. And the throne of Skelos. You can also get the knowledge for the Skelos cultist armor here. Great for dressing up your evil minions in your cultist base. Speaking of armor, there's another slightly different version of this armor set and that's the Skelos Cultist Master Armor. You can find a scroll that teaches you the knowledge when looting defeated sorcerers anywhere in the world. Alternatively, there's also a book that teaches you the knowledge, which can be found close to the shrine of the oracle in the volcano. If you get the scroll from a sorcerer, you will also notice that you learn the knowledge for the forgotten furniture set. 
This set includes dusty, cobweb-covered pieces as well as a creepy cauldron. Alternatively, you can learn the knowledge from a book that can be found above the palace of the Witch Queen. Speaking of cobwebs, learning the religion of Sath brings with it some creepy placeables. Not only the altars, but also this statue. Now for a more dungeon-like feel, you could also put out some steel cages. Everyone can learn the basic one with the furniture maker knowledge. And if you were lucky, you maybe also grabbed a knowledge scroll for a set of different cages during the bounty hunting event. Speaking of that event, it will hopefully return. One of the other knowledge scrolls that could be obtained was for the Kitan Exile Tribute Basin. The perfect decor for a sorcerer lair or similar. If you want to turn the goriness up a notch, we suggest lining your walls with weapon racks that display the limbs of your slain enemies. This severed leg is a relatively rare item that can be found in game. One location we know of, while not 100% spawn, is the compost bin behind a house in Sepameru. A different but identical looking weapon, the dead leg, can also be unlocked at the Library of Esoteric Artifacts. And lastly, there should also be a severed arm, but unfortunately we have yet to find a reliable location for this one. If you know any spots, let us know. Now before we wrap up, let's talk quickly about locations. As you can imagine, the right place can make all the difference. A favorite for witchy or haunted builds is the Silkwood in the Southern Jungle. You will find a lot of cobwebs and spiders here, and the whole place feels simply eerie. A slightly different but similar cursed spot can be found in the Northern Jungle, or Swungle as some like to call it. If you're looking to create a swamp cottage or maybe a treehouse, this is the spot. If you rather prefer it bleak and glum, we recommend building in the tundra to the far west. Lack of color and life guaranteed. Last but not least, the frozen north makes for a great backdrop for any cursed fortress or torturous dungeon. We love the icy shores of the frozen lake just north of the highlands. And that's it for our mod and bazaar free tips when it comes to creating a haunted or dungeon-like atmosphere with just the base game. If you have additional tips, please let us know in the comments and if you found our guide helpful, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe.